ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وبعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد Surely all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His forgiveness, we ask Him for His mercy. We testify with firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His worshipping slave and final messenger. We continually remind ourselves anew of possessing uh, awakening within ourselves of consciousness towards Allah azza wa jal. To have the taqwa of Allah, the consciousness, the awareness of Allah in our dealings, our statements and our actions. And to continue in this path until we return to Him Azza wa Jal, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an. O you who have come to believe, O you who have accepted faith, ittaqullah. Be mindful of Allah, be conscious of Allah. Haqqa tuqati. In the capacity and to the measure that He is deserving of you. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and do not depart from this worldly life in any condition other than willful, voluntary submission to Allah, which is Islam. Uh, as I was sitting uh, just a few seconds ago before the Adhan, uh, one of our brothers, he came up and he said, uh, Brother Yahya, I'd really like if you could talk uh, a little bit about Qadr, belief in Qadr, predestiny, preordainment, and in particular how it relates to how we structure our life. How do we view the things that happen to us, do we just leave it up and we say, Allah wanted this for us, that's it? Or do we have a part and a place to, to play in it? And I actually had a different topic in mind. But qadar Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. It's qadar for us that we talk about this issue with you here today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in numerous passages about the importance of believing that the qudra and the power and the authority is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we heard our uncle making the adhan just a few minutes earlier, he says, Hayy ala salah, hurry, come to life through your prayer. Hayy ala falah, hurry to gain true life through this prayer to attain success. And the answer that you make in every other part of the adhan is repeating what the mu'addin says except there. You say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I have no ability, no ability to turn, no ability to stand, no ability to sit, no power or ability except granted to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah. You cannot make a will that will contradict what Allah has willed. Even if you want something and Allah has desired for you something else, your wish cannot overrule what Allah has decided. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, teaches Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu in the famous hadith of Imam al-Tirmidhi, Ya Ghulam, u'allimuka kalimat. Young boy, let me teach you these simple words. Ihfadillah yahfadk. Guard Allah and Allah will guard you. Now this is an amazing statement because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hafizun alaykum. Allah is the guardian of us. But for you to receive Allah's guardianship to protect you, you must protect ma harram Allah, him Allah. Allah has made boundaries that he asks you to guard. And the word haram, prohibition, it means to cross this boundary. The word faga, to overrule an oppression, to go beyond what is acceptable. The word shaytan, it means shaf, it means gone beyond what is acceptable. And therefore Allah has made these Counsel perimeters for us that he asks us to remain within them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بقدر. He created everything in its due measure. عند أهل الاصطلاح, the word qadr, it means power. 
and it means authority. So a person has been given authority, and a person has been given power from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word qada, which is now part of the mustalah of Ahlul Usul, the people who talk about Islam, they add a word that was not known at the time of the Prophet ﷺ or the first three generations. They talk about al-qada wal qadr. Qada is the execution of the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are, you know, terms that we can study at a more precise time. But we want to understand a rudimentary understanding of how Allah's qadr arrives to us. Laylat al-qadr a'anal Allah alayha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stand it and to be in it in Ramadan in a couple of months time from now is named after the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the night of power, it's the night of Allah's decree, of the descent of the decree. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu tells us that Jibreel descends with the qadr, the measure that is allocated for each of us for that year's time. And it's an opportunity for us to receive what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for us in goodness with worship to bless it. So let's look at principles. First and foremost, there are three interactions that you will experience in life. There are things that happen in you, things that happen in you, you have no power for them, no ability to change them. Your heart beats and your lungs respirate, and you breathe in and out, and the motor functions of your body happen in a way with a higher mind, a higher ability than you can control. You cannot say, I will no longer breathe and die. Your body will un- un- not accept it. You cannot will your heart to stop. It's an impossibility. So there are things that occur within you. Diseases that grow within you. Immunity that is lessened and increases within you. And it's an opportune time for us to understand that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to occur within us at times is beyond our control. The second type of qadr or a second level of qadr is things that happen to you. You could be the best driver and you're sitting at a red light doing everything the law requires. And the person driving behind you slams into you from the back. You had no opportunity to change that matter. There was nothing you could have done from the moment you woke up in the morning to that point of time that could have changed it. Qadr. Things that happen to you. So those two are beyond your control. The third are the things that you are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala control over. In reaction to the first two. In reaction to the first two. So how you meet someone is qadr that you happen to meet me today. Our brother, uh, Adam, he rang me this morning, uh, last night. He said, brother, Yahya, we don't have an imam. My qadr to be with you today. You had no idea that I would be the imam for you here today. How you received me, how our prayer, how our talk has, has measured and entered into this discussion has been written for us, could not have been averted. It is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote. You receive it and I receive it as qadr from Allah. The moment I stand in front of you here today and the decision to come or go was my decision. It's a reaction to the effect that have been placed upon me. Qadr is therefore four levels. Our belief in Allah's qadr comes into four important principles. That the first of them is al-ilm, the knowledge of Allah, is eternal. Allah knew that I would be here with you before I received that phone call. Before the need to, for me to come was initiated. Before I was created and you were created, before the world was created, the knowledge of Allah preceded the action. And therefore one of the deviant sects in al-Islam, one of the deviant sects they used to say, Allah does not know what happens until it happens. And this was a statement of kufr because they have lessened the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows what happens now, what happened before, what will happen, and what would happen even though it will never happen. 
Allah knows what is happening, what has happened, what will happen, and what would have happened even though it can never happen. Allah knows if there was a different imam, what he would have spoken to you about today. But it can't happen. I'm here with you. Alhamdulillah. My qadr. Your qadr. Right? There was a ta'oon, an epidemic, a plague that was spreading through Damascus. And one of the sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, who was the governor of that city, he wrote a letter to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, and he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, come visit us. And as Umar radiallahu anhu was on the way, he hears that a ta'oon, this tuberculosis and plague is spreading. So he stopped. His heart made him feel stop. He didn't know should he go or shouldn't. So he asked the people of Medina. He went back to Medina quickly and he said, Hal minkum shay? Any of you hear anything from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about an outbreak of plague? What should we do? What... You know, how should we deal with this? Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu arda, he reports as narrated in Bukhari wa Muslim, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Prophet وسلم said, if there is an epidemic in a city, don't enter it. And if you are in it, don't leave it. So Umar radiallahu anhu wrote this hadith and sent it to Abu Ubaidah. And he received it and he says, Sahabi, he says, to write back to Umar, about this hadith أتفر من قدر الله Are you scared of Allah's qadr? Are you fearful that if you come you're going to be injured? So Umar wrote back to him أفر من قدر الله إلى قدر الله I run away from the qadr of Allah Yes, I could die to the actual qadr of Allah And this is in harmony with the words of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. It's the basis of your dua and my dua you're in a moment of difficulty. And you might say to yourself, because to people who don't believe in a super uh, natural uh, change in life, to that Allah can change things for us miraculously, they look at our dua as being fruitless. How can you make dua for something you're in? How can you make dua? Isn't it Allah who wrote it for you? The purpose of dua therefore doesn't make sense. In fact, it is wrong. Dua makes the most sense. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he tells us that the one who wishes to make his life longer or his health better or his rizq larger, you want more money? You want to live longer, live healthier, protect your children? Be good to your family. Being good to your family increases your life, increases your wealth? Yes. How does this happen? The qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that is final is known to him alone. لا يعلمه إلا الله عنده مفاتح الغيب. With him are the things of the unseen that no one knows. But there is qadr that descends that is changeable. This is the qadr that descends in different parts of the day, of the week, of the month, of the year. Every Monday and Thursday your qadr descends. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم كما روى الإمام أبي داود Hadith Sahih, he says, the, uh, the angels descend on Monday with my Qadr, with the Qadr. And I wish for them to find me Sa'im, fasting. This is one of the reasons we fast on Monday. And they return to Allah on Thursday, وَتَتَعَاقَبُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ And other angels, they meet one another with the other decree. So the angels coming down on Monday with something, they see me fasting. And when they are arriving back up on Thursday, I want them to say I'm fasting. It changes my qadr. Allahu Akbar. There is also a change of qadr that is on a monthly basis. And one of the reasons we fast al-ayyam al bid the white nights. The white nights are the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every month. It is from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to fast. In those nights, it is a nearness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and a part of our worship changes aspects within our qadr. Our ibadah to Allah, our dua in it, our, our siyam in it, affect what is happening around us. And the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam would encourage this often. And what you find, even scientists today, social scientists, you know, we're at a university, alhamdulillah, Murdoch University, you go into the research department and you see, are there incidents of increased violence or hostility on those nights? And the answer is, 
You know, even in common culture, they say it's a full moon. 